Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's installment of Bracket Up, where we rank the mundane to the slightly less mundane. I am Handy Dandy Andy Jarek, and today we'll be guiding you through the worst place to live. It doesn't have to be a real place. It can be a cinematic universe. It can be a hypothetical. It doesn't matter, but we're taking you through the worst place to live here on Bracket Up. As usual, I'm joined by my two cohorts and co-hosts. First up, we've got the man with the best name in the whole wide world, Mr. Andy Mysek. How are you this beautiful morning? Wonderful. There's one on this list that should be expected from me, and we'll get to oh. that later. <laughs> I think I know which one that might be, but <laughs> we'll keep it a secret. And I'm also joined by the Giggle King himself, Mr. Julian Griffin. How are you today, my man? Doing all right. Um, I have not lived through any of this stuff, but I'm willing to bet I know which one Andy's talking about. <laughs> yeah, same. I luckily have not lived through any of these, but maybe I'll want to after this. I don't know. One, don't one know. of them that was on one of my, my lists that we didn't put on the master list, uh, I did live through, and it was awful. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> Well, we've got only three, I believe, playing rounds, two playing rounds today. A fairly normal bracket. Kind of yeah. weird. Kind of weird. Yeah, thank God it's not fully normal. No, we, we couldn't have just 16. We had to have 18. So our very first uh, playing round, we're starting it off hot with uh, you being next door neighbors with Grand Wizard Nathan Bedford Forrest, former Confederate general. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's pretty awful but is it as bad as being stuck in the resident evil universe do you have a question about the resident evil universe one mm. am i like actively near any of the locations from resident evil or do i just happen to be somebody oblivious to the happenings at the umbrella corporation and i'm just kind of living my life not dealing with zombies i mean you're gonna have to I mean, if you're in the universe, you're going to have to run into zombies at some point. Do But do people? It seems like it's always the same, like, five or six people. Yeah, but how do all those people become zombies? Yeah, they always seem to be in central locations, though. Like, if I just stay away from Raccoon City and shit, I'm fine. Okay, say it spreads all across the country, which it has. Well, look, I haven't played a lot of the most recent Resident <laughs> Evils. <laughs> uh, shit's all over the place. <laughs> I never see sunlight in those games, <laughs> ever. It just seems dark and overcast and not fun. I, you know, lose the zombies, that, that's fine. I want to live in a place that has some sunlight. And I think <laughs> uh, near Grand Wizard Nathan Bedford Forest, I don't know exactly where that is, but somewhere down south, they have the sun. The sun exists. <laughs> it doesn't exist in Raccoon City. See, if I have to live next to him, I don't have to deal with him. However, I'm probably in the South, and I'm going to have to deal with someone like him, like-minded. I'm choosing Resident Evil because I'm living there. I'm not going to live next to him at all, period. So you're choosing Resident Evil as the worst? No, I'm choosing next to Grand Wizard Nathan. I, I that's the worst place to live, for me. <laughs> Um, both of these, I feel like I could avoid the negative situation, but I feel like you're not avoiding the negative situation if you live next to him. Why? I don't know. I don't talk to any of my neighbors. <laughs> Cause uh, you're either a part of the Confederacy and he was going to, uh, uh, do you, do you like, you can sort with those, those Negroes. <laughs> and then that's a problem because I don't even get to be asked that question. Yeah. <laughs> I can see I don't where get to be you asked are. That question. So I can no, see I where have... you're coming from. Uh, I'm probably reserves. I'm leaning towards the same though, because like I said, I don't have to associate with them, but that just means I'm living in the South, and it's all around me. I'm living in. I I, I don't. Yeah, I can deal with the zombies, but I'm not fucking dealing with no goddamn grand wizards. Yeah, but, I don't. I don't know he was around the memphis tennessee area either of you been mm -hmm. to memphis i have not i have no. you have oh dear i have been to memphis right. tennessee and the time that i went there the first time i went there was scary as shit. i didn't know where i was i was driving down this road and i remember 
that as I was passing up this house, there was a, a dude with a trucker's hat and a camo jacket. He was smoking a cigarette and he had a German shepherd and he was staring at me as I was riding past. Oh, Jesus. Never been more scared in my life. That sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to be um, part of that. I know, Andy, you said that no. you just won't go and engage with Nathan Bedford Forrest, right? That was your strategy? Yeah. Just ignore him? Well, uh, yeah. As best I, you can? As best I can. I, I feel like he's going to come to you. Well, um, look, I already made much my of a choice. Look, I, I made my choice. I already went with the Grand Wizard. I know. I just he's not gonna give you much wiggle room there. I think you're pretty much on his side or your house gets burned to the ground. Um so I will also vote for next to Nathan Bedford Forrest, the little bitch that he is. Um all right, so he's moving on to our sweet sixteen. And then at the bottom half of our playing rounds, we've got the always popular Jurassic Park against the always popular with a conspiracy theorist. Could you imagine going through the last 15 months living with a conspiracy theorist? I... Somebody would have died. <laughs> <laughs> it that would have been this pandemic. Oh, Seriously, I... I would have to leave immediately. Like, living in Jurassic Park, sure. Was there a couple of mishaps? Sure. You might get to meet Jeff Goldblum. Exactly. Jeff Goldblum's there. Does Samuel L. Jackson live or does he die? Oh, he dies. Oh yeah, I'm 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 not living. I'm not living. I'm definitely choosing Jurassic Park. I can't have the chance to meet Samuel L. Jackson and him die on me. I mean maybe if you met him you could convince him not to go and try and turn the power on in the uh like while like walking through the raptor habitat. That's <laughs> like, true. You could do your best to, to save him by keeping him in the control room where he's good at his job. Yeah. Um, with a conspiracy theorist, they probably don't have jobs. So you're stuck with them. <laughs> if you're working from home, you're stuck with him 24 hours a day and you get to listen to him prattle on about bullshit. Yeah, but I, at this point, now I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, are we roommates? Because if we're roommates... Yes, you're living I with have, them. Okay, I have like six more months on this goddamn rental and then I can leave could get out and i now. don't have to stay at home if he touches my stuff then we have a problem i think living with a conspiracy theorist is a fate worse than death for me <laughs> <laughs> the dinosaurs get me it's better than having to listen to a conspiracy theorist also possibly dangerous living with a conspiracy theorist for many reasons oh, of course so i do you believe I... in the vaccine the microchip huh or what like, is it? The crystals? Look, look I, maybe I want to be magnetized. I guess. All I'm saying is like, it's like living with a walking, talking Alex Jones. <laughs> Which he is walking <laughs> and talking, but now he's living with me and I don't like it. All sweaty and stuff. I wasn't even sure what I was arguing at the beginning of this. <laughs> I always want Jurassic Park to win, but... I don't know. What is worse? Uh, Julian, I mean, did you vote for Jurassic Park or did you did you get swayed to the conspiracy theorist side? I voted Jurassic Park because Samuel L. Jackson dies. To be fair, uh, Jeff Goldblum's character, Ian Malcolm, is almost a conspiracy theorist with his chaos theory and constantly bringing up mathematical solutions to everything <laughs> um, while spouting wise. But he's also probably more attractive than your, you know, typical conspiracy theorist. So I'd be willing to sure. overlook that uh, just to see that open chest when he's laying on the uh, all injured and high on morphine. Um, uh, let's see here. I think I have to vote for Jurassic Park. It's my baby, and I wanted to win something one of these one of these shows. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, but it's up against the juggernaut next. <laughs> yeah, it, may not, it may not make it much farther. Um, so, because we only had those two play-in rounds, we're back to talking about Nathan Bedford Forrest. Um, but, Ken, is it worse than living in Chernobyl around 1986? Something big happens around that area at that time. Let's say you survive. If there is the no explosion. Survival. There is well, no survival of that explosion. Well, then, then the argument is you just die instantly. Whereas, 
what I'm trying to say. So let's say like you're not home and, and, and you end up going like you're nearby enough where you still get the effects of radiation. Now, not only are you alive, but you're suffering through your life for, for a long time. Yeah. There's no so, winning in Chernobyl. <laughs> there is no winning at all. But it's not as... I mean, because by that logic, then, like, what could be worse than Chernobyl? <laughs> Honestly, either way, in this case, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> what a, what this a, is not a good outlook for me, period. So it's hard for me. I would have to go base off of morals. Nuclear accidents don't give a fuck about my morals. <laughs> and they're not and they're not biased. So I think I'm still gonna have to go with uh it's like if I'm gonna die, at least it'll be done in an instant. With him, I'm gonna die slowly. I feel like, though, if I found out I was living next to a Grand Wizard, my house is on the market the next day. True. I don't have a house anymore to put on the market with Chernobyl. How did real estate work in the 1870s? Like, I, did you just leave your house? Like, just buy, just leave an empty house and travel off to the Oregon Trail? Well, it really, I guess it depends on the area that they were in and what the law was when it came to owning land because they didn't really have real estate there at the time. Right. It was basically like you owned, you were given like a plot of land that there was an agreement for and then you had the deed to that land and then it, whatever you had on that land was, yeah. That makes a little bit more sense than real estate because... He didn't have like a walk-in or anything. He didn't have somebody like. <laughs> there weren't agents. No agents or anything like that. Well, I've seen the movie Chernobyl Diaries, uh, and that definitely implies that people survived the Chernobyl uh, incident of the late '80s and just became these blistered, nasty freaks who wanted to kill anybody who came to Chernobyl. Um, so you might survive. You've got a, a, a very small chance, but you might make it. Uh, I'm voting for Chernobyl because that sounds worse. Surviving sounds worse. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I already voted, so what do you got? Oh, let's see. Um, worst place. Um, I, I will vote for Chernobyl. I think. Yeah, yeah we'll move that bad boy on. All right, on to another matchup. First off, we've got with your Russian slap fighting buddy who always wants to spar. <laughs> or you're in a home uh, where your roommates don't use the bathroom and then just go poop in the yard. Not an outhouse either, just, just a poop in the yard like you're a dog. You know, you could avoid the yard. But then if you're living with them, do they make you like, we don't have a bathroom in this home. <laughs> We've removed the toilet. You must now poop in the yard. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Did you live through this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> was this the one? No, it's not was on the list. The it, it was living next to an L stop I did. I mm. lived next to one. And that, uh, I, I, I could spout at the, the words I heard every five to eight minutes. <laughs> well, in that case, you know, I'm, I don't know. What was the other one? Uh, get the slapped. Russian dude that wants to fight all the time. I think that would be the worst. I'll choose that. Because, like, I feel like you can avoid the poop in the yard. Like, you don't have to go out to the yard. And then it's just like, if it's that bad, okay. uh, it, it, in a house or home, maybe that home is, like, in an apartment somewhere or a place where you can just, like, you know what, I'm just going to go use a public restroom. Hold on, let me show you uh, Legend Vasily Kamatsky slapping a guy uh, who who has been the champion several times. Just so you get a visual <laughs> of what, what's happening here. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that's worse. That was definitely worse. Look, look at this. Look at this brutal slap. You don't say no to a guy like that. You just don't. I would. If he says, let's spar, I'm like, cool. Can I bring a crowbar? <laughs> But Vasily goes first. Vasily goes first? 
that's fine if he slaps me and goes first. As long as I'm, he better knock me the fuck out. Because if he doesn't, Hold on, I'm trying to find. Crowbar comes uh, his way. He's gonna get. Uh... I wonder how you even spar for a fight like that. You just, you just go. Hold on. Uh, let me show you one round uh, of this guy in a in a gif. <laughs> oh, I've him. seen this. <laughs> never seen it. It just takes the whole Why would that poor little boy even <laughs> try? Like, what do you think, man? No. Dumb. And that guy probably got paid like four hundred dollars and a hot dog to get brain damage. Meanwhile, the poop in the yard is gross, and you you have to clean that. But I'm voting for sparring with Vasily. <laughs> I'm voting that one too. I'm not. I ain't sparring with Vasily. I'd plan his assassination. <laughs> uh, I'll give a pity vote to the yard poop and roommates. Look, you could try to plan Vasily's assassination, but Vasily will get to you first. You know what? I'm going to tell ICE. I'm going to tell. <laughs> I'm going to report him to ICE. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of his documents and be like, this dude doesn't have a green card. I don't know where he came from. <laughs> uh, all right, next matchup. We've got a, feist, a feisty porcupine. It's a little feisty porcupine against uh, sharing an apartment with a bunch of improv comics. I mean, this is easy for me. I ain't living with the improv comics. You live with a feisty porcupine, so he yeah. just wants to shoot the shit out of you every time he sees you? Yes. I'll, I'll hide in my room if I must. But the, the improv comics, there's no getting away. You hear them in their rooms practicing. You come out and they're like, hold on, come listen to my set. And <laughs> each joke is worse than the next. Again, a fate worse than death. I mean, you'd be trying to put the grocery list together and <laughs> they'd ask you, what do you want? And you would say, uh, we need some chicken. And they'd be like, yes, and? And then you'd have to be, well, uh, we need paper plates. And then they'd be like, well, yes, and? And well, we also need toilet paper. Yes, and um, a dozen eggs. And it would just go on for the entirety of the grocery list, which 15, 20 minutes every couple of days, I'd be miserable. Um, but but that feisty porcupine, you never know what, you know, if you do leave your room, and I assume you have to leave your room to eat, to use the bathroom, to go out. You don't know where he's coming from, and he's gonna tickle your feet with his pointy, pointy spikes. I don't know. That porcupine, he's feisty. I don't like him. Yeah, I think the feisty porcupine's worse. See, with the people that live in an improv group, all you have to do is just let them know you're not interested. Want to hear my joke? No. Julian, no. <laughs> I have a question for you. No. But then you're just gonna, you're still gonna hear it. You're just gonna hear coming from the hallway, what's the deal with airline food? And then I have headphones. Come. You're gonna have to constantly be like fighting uh, against them yelling about their stupid fucking bad jokes. I have headphones. I will make no contact with anybody or I can just get really high. And at least with, uh, you know, you can, you can communicate in English to these improv comics. The porcupine does not understand yeah, what you're true. saying. It's just gonna be feisty whenever it wants. And once ever you think, uh, oh, it's not gonna be not too bad. I'm getting used to it. Boom, there it is. Quill to the knee in the middle of a nap and you are wide awake. I'm voting for the porcupine. I'm also you, voting for porcupine. You would never convince me otherwise. <laughs> well, good luck with that porcupine. Yeah, good luck with your improv group. <laughs> I told you, I could just get really high and join them. It's true. It's not enough. <laughs> All right, next matchup, we've got uh, between two bowling alleys or in a house full of people who don't, don't shower. shower. There we go. Sorry, I had to get real close. Um, so I put the bowling alley idea on there and ripping this off straight off from Frank Grimes and The Simpsons, who lives uh, between a bowling alley and another bowling alley, one on top, one below. You're like a sandwich. <laughs> sounds awful. But is it awful in a house full of people? Not just one roommate, then a house full of people 
who do not shower. I mean, that's pretty much just living in a bowling alley. I feel like I can get the news there, or I can get one of them shows on TLC to come out. (laughs) Help save me from this house full of smelly people. Ship and Joanna Gaines, please. uh, TLC would eat that up, too. And then I would just stay at somebody else's house all the time. I'd barely go there. Yeah, I could. Make some good money. I could make some good money. So I'm going to choose between two bowling alleys because that sounds painful. Uh, You're gambling too much on TLC, I think. I'm doing with the shower people. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, man. House house is bad. This is bad news. I think I'm going to go with the bowling alleys. Just the constant sound of pins being demolished. Yeah, and then all those bad people. What about your you headphone really idea, Julie? <laughs> huh? Put you put headphones on. <laughs> Same with your improv troop shit. You can't put headphones on to stop the smell. Yeah, but also you can't put headphones on to stop the bowling balls from hitting you. <laughs> you're, not, you're not living in the bowling alleys. You're between two bowling alleys. You're right, and then an all those people who are like really bad at bowling yeah, are just you, crushing your fingers. No, but you're living in your own home. It's like your room is between two. So you're not going to hit, get, see these people. You're just going to hear them. You're not going to convince me that living with a bunch of smelly people is worse than getting hit in the head with bowling balls. <laughs> I'm going to stick you in a room <laughs> full of smelly people and see what, see what happens here. I have been in a room filled with smelly people. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park daycare is center. Back. There we go. Ooh. Oh, Jurassic Park is back. It's going up against the Keebler Elf Tree. Question about the Keebler Elf Tree: Am I like regular size, trying to fit myself inside the Keebler yes. Elf Tree, or do I shrink to proper size? No, no, no. It's you as yourself living in the Keebler Elf Tree. Well, then I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choosing the Keebler Elf Tree. Is yeah, the we're going to lay. They'll sustain you with cookies. No, like not the fact so that I'm probably not going to have a place to use the bathroom. I'm probably not. I'd probably kill them before they kill me. Yeah, there's a good chance you're stepping on uh, Papa Elf. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna throw Snap, Crackle, and Pop in there, but those are their bones breaking and not their names. I mean, I'm on the same page with you. I think the Keebler Elf Tree is a way worse situation, whether you shrink down or not. Well, if I don't, well, that's the universe we made up. You don't shrink down the size. Exactly. Because if I did shrink down the size, that would be different. I'm like, great, an escape from all my problems. I get to eat all the cookies that I want. I'm a little magical fucking gnome. This is cool. How do you even fit in the doorway in the first place? True. You just get in. A meat grinder. <laughs> Maybe you gotta like take the fall guys approach and stuff yourself into a really small costume and stretch out your spine and your eye socket. Yeah. I'm also get voting for the Keebler Elf Tree. All your bones. It's become a rubbery hunk of skin. I think we got a sweep here for Keebler, so we'll move yeah. that bad boy on. All right, Keebler Elf Tree will either be going up against England in 1348 or with people who only listen to U2. I can handle U2. I can't handle the bubonic plague. In fact, I don't think all three of us can handle the bubonic plague. No, I played that uh, Plague Tale game that came out a couple years ago. Rats get you every time. One Um, misstep and a horde of rats take off your foot. Not fun. Are we having challenge issues? No, no, no. I'm checking something. 30 to 60% of Europeans died from the bubonic plague. I would 100% die living with somebody listening to you two all day. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. I will vote for the U2, and I will say no more about it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm choosing England, 1348, because it sounds like those are still pretty high damn numbers to get killed by the bubonic plague. And medical fine. science wasn't that great back then. What are, so. what are the odds you're surviving living in a year-long lease with somebody who only listens to YouTube? They're a Bono fanatic. That's fine. 
As what? long as we learn to respect each other, respect what? our boundaries, there is no and we pay rent on time, There's I'm no perfectly res- fucking fine no with respect. it. No respect. He respect each other. I cannot respect somebody who only listens to you two. Well, I'm gonna and vote I can't for respect somebody Ingo. who's dead from the bubonic plague. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm voting for England, uh, 1348. <laughs> you might grow to like you too. You never know. Yeah, it's true. No. All right, next up we've got, uh, well, this one I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is one Andy put on here. The state of Ohio. <laughs> Anywhere in Ohio. Just don't live there. Uh, going against the high school musical cinematic universe. Hey, some of those kids can sing, and in Ohio there's nothing good. I want... <sighs> I'm choosing place. Ohio as the better place to live because my sister lives in Ohio. God, mm. God bless her. She's she's living in what could only be described. And as my brother lives hella. in Ohio. Hell on earth. They're both happy. Let me tell you. Do they do they tell you every time they're from Ohio? Do they they talk about Ohio all the time? That seems no, to be what don't. Ohio folks do. No, they don't. I uh, I was working a a relay for life, and um, I was making small talk with people as they came by, and the, this guy comes up. And I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? you? You from the area? And he looks at me and glares and then points to his Cleveland hat. And I'm like, oh, of course. You're from when was Ohio. This? <laughs> when was this like three years ago? Oh, okay. Was this when, Le- when did LeBron go to Cleveland? Uh, years before that. Okay. No, because I know that he transferred back, though. Yeah, yeah. And. Yeah, I think he might have been. It might have been the year before he became a Laker. <laughs> yeah, so they're probably just flexing on the fact that we got LeBron. No, oh, he's flexing on the fact he's from Ohio. But but I also know a lot of people who like are so proud of Ohio, but they moved away from Ohio. So why are you here? Go back to Ohio. No one wants to be in Ohio. <laughs> On this guy's hat, did it just say Cleveland? Or was it like a sports team or something? It was a Cavalier shirt? Uh, he was wearing a Cavalier shirt, but he pointed to a hat that it was Cleveland. I'm more than positive That's he dumb. meant the Cleveland <laughs> Cavaliers, but whatever. Cleveland! <laughs> they probably Woo! forgot how to point at his body and instead pointed to his head. Yeah, I don't say, know. I guess. Did, also, didn't say a fucking word to me. He just pointed. I'm like, all right, dickhead. He should have just been like Massachusetts just to piss him <laughs> off. I just pointed him the way the fuck away from your relay from life. Just send oh. him back. Also, look, Ohio, there's nothing good there. He, like, Cleveland's a depressing place. Nephews are in, Ohio, in Columbus. Yeah, but, but. They're wonderful. Yeah, they should leave and then you, it'll be much better because then you'll never have to go visit them in Ohio. But my brother and his wife and kids, they live in. Columbus as well. I was just, I also, look, it's not like I've never been to Ohio. I've probably been to Ohio like 20 times. I Wait, knew. where in Ohio have you been though? Name a city. Okay, Columbus, so you've Cleveland, been to Columbus, Cincinnati. right? Columbus, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. So I've been to the big three. And then like, I've been to like small towns around there. Akron, home of LeBron James. Well, how is Akron? like the rest of fucking Ohio. <laughs> the best part of Ohio I found out yesterday. Akron's mi- like minor league baseball team is the Akron Rubber Ducks. And I'm all for That's that. Cool. That's the best part of Ohio. <laughs> I found I'm one still, positive I'm, for Ohio. I'm voting for I'm Ohio. Not. Those people in high school musical, some of them could sing. I wouldn't like to have to do a musical every time uh, the conversation changes, but it's better than Ohio. I feel like I would be exhausted if I lived in the high school musical cinematic universe. Could you just imagine? It's just like you're just you're not having a good day. You're 16 years old. And then you have to this sing girl about. that you like is like isn't really into you. But then you're in the middle of lunch class and the main <laughs> cast they just get into a weird dispute and then everybody breaks out in a dance and song and you don't feel like dancing. You don't feel like singing. Your heart's broken. But, Your heart's broken from that but girl. It, once you graduate high tonight. school and leave. You don't have to deal with it anymore. You're done. Your high school musical journey has ended. In Ohio, your hell continues forever. I do not want to deal with Zac Efron coming up to my (laughs) chest and bumping me because I didn't hit my ha-cha-cha-cha-cha quite in time with everybody else. 
uh, after true. I got a D plus on my algebra two exam. Just not in the mood today, Zach. I'm, I'm also really voting the high school today. musical. That is, Julian made a great point. What if you're not a main character? And your life sucks. Your yeah. life sucks. What is over at 17? You're done. Bye. No, 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 no. This this transcends the entire universe. This is how you communicate in your day to day life. It's by and you're just the numbers. character that you are forever and ever and ever. Maybe music and song will brighten your day. Did you ever think of that? No. What's brightening your day in Ohio? The sun never rises in Ohio. It's cloudy all day. <laughs> that is very untrue. They have sunny <laughs> days in Ohio. I believe it. Yeah, maybe um, two or three a year. Go on. <laughs> all right, we've got our final match up here in the Sweet 16. A couple of juggernauts living in the Family Guy universe or with a couple that happens to be going through a divorce but still lives in the same place. An ugly divorce. <laughs> ugly divorce, I would have Sorry. to say the ugly divorce is probably the worst because in the Family Guy universe, that'll be fun <laughs> and wacky. Would you there imagine aren't consequences? living yeah. near Peter Griffin? It'd probably be hilarious. It pro first Which... off, it's not funny. Have you watched Family Guy too? <laughs> yes, I have. Oh, it's just not. It would be dangerous. It'd be as dangerous as Chernobyl. You'd have the same uh, survival rate. It would not be as dangerous as Chernobyl. Fine, it'd be more dangerous. Bubonic plague killed 30 to 60% of Europe. I think you'd have more That's likely to die. That's still thousands of people. How many thousands of people do you see die in Family Guy? A lot! They blow shit up That's all the time. That's a lot to thousands. Shoot, um, all of the seasons combined where people die on the show does not even closely add up to thousands of people. Have you ever watched the chicken fights in Family Guy that get progressively longer and more, more people that like plane crashes and buildings blowing up and- Okay, so, but I don't have to be Thousands are dying. That. Thousands are dying. That is not thousands of people are dying. That is not Chernobyl scale death, sorry. Look, I am gonna vote for Family Guy because the divorced couple. I mean, that it's sucks. gonna be awkward I... for everybody. Because what if somebody hits somebody? Oh, well, then I call the police. I might be the one saving someone's life in that situation. There's a, a moral obligation to keep them apart and make sure no one is physically, emotionally, or, or verbally harmed in any way. Whereas in okay, Family so Guy, like, there's no keep... avoiding your your inevitable pain. Well, no, seriously, okay, that's different. If it's just emotional and verbal, you can't call the police and say, she's cussing him out and calling him no, but I, a, I, a I, I could, but lack I could, of a man or something like that. But I, I could be, not gonna give a fuck about be that. a mediator to a degree. It's, it's a, Why would you get in their business? That's concerning. <laughs> it's not, if I'm living with them, it becomes my problem. Then you need to tell them like, yo, I, I'm not gonna get in between y'all, but could you please? take that shit outside okay, that so is see, the most so look, you should pro say okay so problem solved there i told the all time tell me how you're going to avoid peter griffin <laughs> blowing up buildings here. say i live down the street he just passes my house up in the first damn episode he takes out everyone's cable <laughs> He does take out everybody's cable. Yeah, that, and that's mild compared to where this show goes. Okay, but like, so, okay, what year of Family Guy are we talking? Because if it's modern, like, none of us go off cable anyway. Uh, first off, it's in the Family Guy universe, so you'd be living in the Family Guy universe. There's no timeline. You'd be right now, and I still have cable, asshat. Also, fair. Also. Who's to say that you're even on the same block? You're in the universe. They go all over the world. They've never been shy about all saying, right. there's a whole world outside of it. But so maybe I don't live in Quahog. Maybe but I that, still live in Chicago. But the Family Guy universe, you I mean, like you can say the same thing about High School Musical. What if I just don't go to school with Zac Efron? I yeah, mean, but here's the thing. In the Family idea is Guy, you're they've in gone the... across country. They've gone all parts of the world. And then so that's, that's, that's your that's your world outside of that's it. That's your break from the, the uh, your fear of dying that week. Are you saying that like I'm a part of the family or the reoccurring characters? Is that what you're saying? You're a background character, just like you are in High School Musical. You are always around when they're in Quahog. Always around when they're in Quahog, so I'm a character. I'm pretty sure that the people that are in Quahog, the background characters, are just pretty much fine with life. Also, we're just talking about Peter, but like everyone in that show is a fuck, so... 
bunch of problems are solved in 22 minutes. And then you're done. I agree. Yeah. Gotta wait every... a week until next week when there are problems again for 22 minutes. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like a fucking nightmare. Also, in the show, days pass with problems. Just because it, it, you're, you're seeing on TV 22 minutes, days are right. passing. But there's no consequences, hardly. Blowing up buildings! I'm voting Family Guy. You have not convinced me that the ugly divorce, as awkward as it may be. Yeah, but like if you're getting up to like, you want to use the bathroom, but then like you see your angry, frustrated sex in there because they don't know how to call things off. That's awful. I don't want to be a part of that experience. And then I don't want to wake up. Did you eat my damn cinnamon toast crunch? I told you. Not to eat my cinnamon toast crunch, and you did it anyway, you bitch. No, that's awful. But meanwhile, meanwhile, if we want to talk, eat, I don't... If we want to talk bathroom. Uh, there's a reoccurring joke about uh, a bathroom with Family Guy. So let's say you're in the bathroom and you're just having a hot soak, and then uh, Peter, Peter comes and blows up half your fucking house with a helicopter. <laughs> then that would mean I'm Cleveland. It's just an example. It could be anyone. It happens that this to happens. him, though. It doesn't happen to anybody else. It, it could happen to anybody else. That's the thing. It, Why are you avoiding the most obviously worst places to live? The places that you've chosen to live against some of the obvious choices you've gone To be against. fair, both of these Why? are ones I put on the list. I Why aren't you going for the obviously worst one? Because I think Family Guy Universe would be terrible. I oh would gosh. rather be with the divorced couple. Oh my god, I am choosing with the couple that went. Uh, that's my vote, with the couple. Yeah, I'm with Julian on this one. Oh, you're both oh, just fun. Enjoy I'm Peter. To hear arguments and stuff. <laughs> Enjoy Peter. All right, we've got our Elite Eight, and we're starting off with Chernobyl against the Russian slap fighter who just wants to spar. I'm choosing Chernobyl because, I mean, Vasily Kamatsky's slap is like a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'll probably survive that. I've seen some of that didn't. <laughs> Who died? died? No one dies, but you might as well wish you were dead. I'm voting Chernobyl too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam. Oh my gosh. I just wanted to make the joke of Vasily's nuclear slaps. <laughs> All right, next up. Is the feisty porcupine worse than living sandwiched between two bowling alleys? Uh, both sound awful. That's hard. <laughs> I might vote for the porcupine on this one. There's actual physical pain that can come from this. There's not physical pain that can't come from bowling balls? You're not living between two bowling alleys. You will not get hit with a ball. You have an apartment, and next to your apartment are bowling alleys. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn it, Julian, you're fucking ball. You never know if a bowling ball might get dropped through uh, you know, the alley and just land in your living room, creating a massive hole you need to fix. I'm voting for the porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the porcupine could always roll himself into a ball as well and just become a spiky bowling ball. I'm voting the bowling alley. Because <laughs> I still think I'll get hit with the ball somehow. You know I'm just fucking with you. Right? Yes, I know. <laughs> so there's a chance to empty the deep fryer right through your drain pipes and just eat through you. your oh, just awful. Yeah, it's bowling out. It's bowling balls, and they hit you. Hmm. I think I got to go with the porcupine, though. Oh yeah. Man, he's so okay. unpredictable. That's awful, Ron. All right, bottom half of the Elite Eight. Uh, in the Keebler Elf Tree, stalked into the Keebler Elf Tree, or in England during the bubonic plague. 30 to 60% death versus 100% death. <laughs> Give me Keebler, baby. Keebler Elf. <laughs> At least, yeah, I might get a couple of those delicious sandwich cookies before I perish. <laughs> you don't even get to. Your neck is going to snap instantly. <laughs> Well, what if I put my foot in first and I somehow can put the, can put the cookie between your toes and maybe I could reach down and then eat it? They didn't have Keebler Elf cookies in uh, England 1348. They didn't have showers. 
They didn't have any. <laughs> but you had they a just had disease. But you had a seventy to forty percent chance of survival. It's, it's not. What? I'm on your side. I, I'm voting for the Keebler Elf tree. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. You two voted for, for the okay. Keebler tree. All right, final matchup in the Elite Eight. High School Musical Cinematic Universe or with that divorcing couple. What's worse, hearing arguing or singing? Could you imagine combining these two and all their fights and musicals? <laughs> <laughs> That would be the single worst one on this list. Level of hell. Uh, well, okay. So the cinematic universe, you take your your life problems from school and you go home. So there's a decent chance that there are people in that universe who are dealing with the same situation. Who have divorcing oh, parents. Oh, so you're a kid who's dealing with divorcing parents. Possibly. Your mom stop, won't stop drinking wine. Your dad leaves out. Yeah, he just watches uh, children's cartoons all day and doesn't get a job. You know, I, I tried to... I thought that there was a benefit to High School Musical when it went up against my ultimate hell of Ohio. But, man, the singing and the dancing, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want... The divorcing couple's bad, I know, but man, I'm voting for High School Musical. The singing, the dancing. If it you have just, a problem, you have to sing and dance about it if you want to talk about it. It's just literally at the drop of a hat. You need to burst in the show-stopping number. And that is going to get old after the first show-stopping number. Yeah, I agree. I'm voting Could High School Musical as well. you imagine that your best friend was Zac Efron and you were dealing oh. with the divorce at your parents? Oh, no. And then he would literally walked up to you and he's like, come here, I got a way to make you feel better. And you're just like, no, please, Zach, no. I just need somebody to talk to. No, <laughs> and please. A one, and a two, God, and no. a you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You hear music in the background. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, it's this High School Musical, high school musical. See You for Me. Yeah. Oh, God. All right, we've got a hell of a final four. Starting <laughs> off with Chernobyl. What is happening to my curtains? Oh, it's my fiance trying to go away. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chernobyl against the feisty porcupine. Boy, we're gonna we're gonna push the porcupine forward, aren't we? <laughs> I'm not pushing him forward, Chernobyl. I'll make mm -hmm. Andy choose and vote for the porcupine. <laughs> yeah, right, Andy gets to choose. Okay, well, I'm definitely voting for Chernobyl because okay. there's no way that porcupine. I mean, I was gonna vote even if you vote, if, like imagine you and the porcupine live in Chernobyl. <laughs> oh, he's gonna lose his quills like one by one. He has to pull them out and dispose, and he never grows them back. Let's be honest. That's just I wanted, sad. I would have voted for Chernobyl if you didn't make that comment. I wanted to see if you would push the porcupine or not. No. I think we've learned here on this podcast that Chernobyl and nuclear fallout just always makes its way to the finals. I mean, Every time it comes up, it's the Jurassic Park that I want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bottom half of the bracket, the Keebler Elf Tree, uh, which is basically instant death against High School Musical Cinematic Universe, which is a very prolonged death. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that instant death is a better option than the High School Musical. Give me High School Musical as the worst. But you're you're forced in this Keebler elf tree <laughs> to stuff yourself in there. There's no getting oh out of it. The God, elves no don't have the power to pull you in. They're too yeah, weak, they're too feeble. But let's say you're on your way to school and you, you know, this isn't addressing my arguments at all. Yeah, your <laughs> argument is it, it, it's painful, and, but you've got to do it yourself. Whatever. Okay. A DIY move into instant death. I'm choosing that as well. <laughs> Sing about it, Julian. Quick. Well. I Sing. Mean, dead, Sing and dance. What if the key? No, you're talking. Is Sing and in... dance. <laughs> High School Musical. We're not combining them. Sing and dance. No. Wait. Oh my gosh. What if that is like the lesson that you learned in your own little High School Musical? You have the ability to say no. 
<laughs> but then everyone. That's Zac Efron's kryptonite. No. <laughs> but but then he dances and sings around you. And you can tell him, I'm leaving now. And then you can wander the cosmos only to wake up the next day in school. So you and you, we all differ here. You guys all take, oh, instant death is terrible because I'm dead. But there are things worse than death. And the high school musical universe is worse than death. Yeah, but what if you're alive during the... You have to live through the process of being stuffed into the Keebler Elf tree. We already said it's like 100% you're going to die pretty instantly. You've still got to make that choice to do it yourself. You're not what getting I, any help. Okay, then using Julian's logic, I just feel like... No. I I changed my mind. <laughs> well, in other words, you're, you're just not in the tree. You're forced to be a member of... Then you're not in the tree. But then if you say no to the high school universe, you're not in the high school universe. And then you didn't hear what I said afterwards. You leave only to wake up in class the next day. Uh, so it's like a hell you can't, you can't escape from. <laughs> that sounds worse than dying in the tree. <laughs> Thanks yeah, but for you making don't... my argument for me. Are you two both voting for the tree? Yes. Oh, you guys are nuts. You guys are absolute nuts. <laughs> well, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> You're right. I'm voting for the tree this time. All right, Julian, you want to vote for Chernobyl? <laughs> yeah, let's vote for Chernobyl. Boom. Goodbye, oh, tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. The tree is not as bad as Chernobyl or High School Musical for that matter. <laughs> Wow. All right. So we found out that the worst place to live would be in Chernobyl right around 1986 before the nuclear meltdown. Uh, second place is being forced to stuff yourself into a <laughs> Keebler elf tree, not enjoying any of the perks of being part of the Keebler elves. Uh, and then tie for third is with that feisty porcupine and the high school musical cinematic universe. Did this go about how we thought it would go? Chernobyl was going to win, I knew from the beginning, but... I'm uh, really surprised that a feisty porcupine <laughs> got as far as it got. I really um, liked that one. I thought that was a great answer. Well, it, other than Chernobyl, because we all agreed, Chernobyl, nuclear anything is terrible, because even if you survive, you live through a hellish world. Um, what would be your worst? The next Grand Wizard, Nathan. That's, for me, that's the worst, because there's no fucking <laughs> way I'm not going to be affected by that. Yeah. yeah. From the very first day that you you know walk into the house, you are absolutely screwed. Yeah, you guys might be fine. Me? No, no, no. I, I think that living in a apartment between two bowling alleys means eventually that you just get smashed, because there's no yep. way a, a small You're apartment can hit. hold up a bowling alley. <laughs> like It's You're just going to squash hit. you. <laughs> Frank Grimes did it. Yeah, but he also died anyway that episode. I I think like outside of all my joking of Ohio, because I just like to hate. It's it's part of my shtick. I do think the worst is High School Musical. I couldn't. The, the death of all of these. It, there's a there's an end. There's an end in sight. There's no end <laughs> in High School. You eighty years, ninety years of High School Musicaling. It's just yeah. the worst. And you know when you're on your deathbed, you're going to have to sing like a low Johnny Cash ballad <laughs> uh, about how I hurt myself one day to see if I still feel. Um, <laughs> and then you just, you, you die. Like, man, the, even at your it. very last moment, you have to sing. And then you wake up again back in high school to live it all over again. <laughs> it, I, I, I just, there's no way, there's no way it's not the worst. Mm. It's third worst. <laughs> Tied with the feisty porcupine. <laughs> oh, God. This was fun. I, I, I love these random hypothetical ones where you come up with stupid shit. <laughs> They're my favorites, too. Uh, all right. Anything else to add before we wrap this bad boy up? I'm good. I think we covered it. All right. Sounds like a plan. So again, just to reiterate, uh, Chernobyl 1986, the worst place ever to live. And for the Giggle King, Julian Griffin, and the man with the best name in the whole wide world, Andy Mysek, I'm Handy Dandy Andy Jarek, and we will see you next week on Bracket Up.